AFC Ajax, an absolute super team and super power of Dutch football. Ajax are the most famous club in Dutch football and they are just so successful. They have won 34 goddamn Eredivisie titles. They have also won four Champions League titles. However, they haven't won a Champions League since 1995. Ajax came so close to making it back to the Champions League final after that immaculate run they had two seasons ago where they unfortunately lost to Tottenham right at the death in really, really controversial and just absolutely insane fashion. And with some insane talents in their side like Frankie de Jong, Matthias de Ligt and Donny van der Beek, people thought that Ajax were only going to go up and up. But Ajax hit the sale button just like they have for so many years in recent memory. With de Ligt, de Jong, van der Beek among many players departing the club, Ajax have not been able to get even close to that level in the previous seasons. But today we are headed to the Dutch capital of Amsterdam, taking over Ajax, looking to get them their first Champions League title in over 20 years, as today we rebuild Ajax. Lads, here we go, an Ajax rebuild on FIFA 21, Rebuildmas 2020. This is day number nine. I hope you guys are enjoying Rebuildmas so far. If you guys are new around here, however, make sure you bloody scorpion kick that subscribe button down below. Very bloody close now to 370,000 subs. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have not seen a rebuild video in the past, here are the rules. The objective of the rebuilds are to win the UEFA Champions League final. All games in the rebuild are simulated. We cannot use the new jump in feature in rebuilds. The Champions League final, however, must be played. And of course, do not get butt hurt if I sell your face. Favorite player. There's the rules and objectives. Now it's time to jump into the rebuild. So here is the starting 11 that we do have here for season number one at Ajax playing a 4-3-3 formation. There's certain aspects of the squad that I don't think we'll have to touch for at least the majority or yeah, the entirety of the rebuild. I mean, Onana is someone that I plan on keeping in the squad for a long time, but then we're going to see how the growth goes of players like Neres, Anthony, Sjurs, uh, Graven Birch, all these sorts of guys. Anyways, in terms of transfers for this first season, I'm thinking a new centre-back in terms of a younger one and a new striker, a younger one as well. I really want to build the starting 11 to grow together. We have decided to start off life here at Ajax, however, with a player departure. It is Davy Klaassen headed back to the Premier League, not headed to Everton, headed to Newcastle United this time for £19 million. And the Moroccan centre-forward, Zakaria Labyard, is headed to the Bundesliga, signing with Frankfurt for 5.2 mil. And it is a Big, big, big player departure here. Dusan Tadic headed to Leipzig. I thought if we were Champions League contenders this year, I'd consider keeping him in the squad, but you guys know how it is. 31 years of age, 83 overall. Too damn expensive to be holding on to him and watching him depreciate in value. So we managed to get 38.5 million pounds for him, and I'm more than happy with that. And a former player here at Ajax returning to his boyhood club. It is Davinson Sanchez joining us back from Tottenham. Jose Mourinho has sold the Colombian defender back to us here in Amsterdam at the Johan Cruyff Arena for 33.7 million pounds. Daly Blind, similar scenario to what we had with Dusan Tadic. Valuable, aging, decreasing. So we've sold Daly Blind to Barcelona for 27.9 mil. And we have signed ourselves a new starting striker here to replace Dusan Tadic. It is Maximiliano Gomez, the Uruguayan striker, signing here from Valencia for 41.2 million pounds. I've heard just a little rumor that Ajax have had a good history with Uruguay Uruguayan strikers. We have also decided to loan out Wrench here on a one-year loan move to Benevento. And Edson Alvarez, also out of the club on a one-year loan, or two-year loan, I should say, headed to Borussia Mönchengladbach. This guy could honestly be a beast for us in the future, but I want to make sure he gets game time. Same deal with Mohamed Kudus. I was considering starting him in the starting 11 and letting him grow, but 
it's not, he's not at the scratch with the rest of the squad yet, not up with Quincy, Quincy Promes, so I have sent Mohamed Kudus on a two-year loan move to Sevilla. Kiel Sherpin also out of the club, loaning all of our decent prospects here, a two-year loan to Bezishtas for the goalkeeper, and Hassan Bande, just a one-year loan move for him, the attacker signing with Bournemouth in the championship for the next 12 months. The loans keep on coming and they don't stop coming. Lacina Traore off to Frankfurt for the next year. And Kenneth Taylor, the Dutch midfielder, staying in the Netherlands, off to AZ Alkmaar for a one-year move. So there we go, lads. Two players into the club, four players out of it. The good thing is, as you can see, we've made a profit in terms of transfers this transfer window. Really want to suss out a few things. How the side's growing, how they're going. Like, if we're in the Champions League knockout rounds, I would honestly consider making a few big moves to try making a deep run in the Champions League this year. But the transfer window really this year was a lot of loan moves, a lot of foundational builders, and I'm very happy with what we've done so far. And after we have had this transfer window, this is how the side is looking. Bloody stoked that we've already gotten the sharpness and morale up to 100% perfect. I've I think I've got this down to like a, an absolute science now, lads. I've been toying around with it, and I've just learned a formula to make dynamic play, to make the morale and happiness just and the sharpness just all perfect. So fingers crossed we can keep it that way. The side's growing nicely. The side's looking nice. Let's see who we got in the Champions League. So of course, just like real life, we have got a very, very tough group here in the Champions League. Liverpool, Atalanta, and FC Midtjylland. Not an easy opponent group at all. I'm hopeful we can sneak in. I would say it's safe to assume Liverpool are going to win the group. But if we could sneak in at second in the group, I'd be bloody over the moon with that. Let's go, lads. How bloody good is that? We have finished second in our Champions League group here. Only one point behind Liverpool. But we have finished second on 12 points. And we are in to the Champions League knockout rounds for the first season here. But it is going to be a big challenge in the Champions League round of 16 as we have been drawn up against Chelsea here. Frank Lampard's Chelsea in the round of 16. I mean, it should be virtually automatic that we are winning the Bundesliga or the Eredivisie, I should say, every single bloody season. But right now, it's a two-horse race between ourselves and PSV. AZ Alkmaar sort of up there, but ourselves and PSV are the two top dogs. We need to make sure we get on a great run of form here in the second half of the season and pull ahead of them. So making some moves here in the January transfer window, the Russian midfielder Alexander Golovin is joining us for 40.9 million pounds from AS Monaco. Definitely overpaid slightly, but I'm hopeful and confident in the long run, Golovin can turn into a beast and justify that price tag. So there we go, lads. Golovin into the squad. Nobody out of it. Was considering making a few transfers, but I've decided and elected against us. But we do have Chelsea, our first taste of Champions League knockout round football in this rebuild. Come on, Ajax. Let's see how we go. All right, lads. The first leg is at home here at the Johan Cruyff Arena, taking on Chelsea, needing to make sure that we set ourselves up for a strong second leg. And you guys know when you're playing at home, clean sheets are priority number one most of the time. And that reigns true today. We've got Chelsea at home. A clean sheet would be absolutely class as we simulate it. And the scoreline is a one-all draw. I mean, they get a goal. It's not a clean sheet. They have the away goal advantage. But it's not the worst in the world. Okay, ladies. Legs number two. We take on Chelsea away in London here at Stamford Bridge. Need to make sure that we get ourselves a goal number one. That is to wipe out the Chelsea away goal advantage is so damn crucial. But we're going to simulate it here. Come on, lads. For a spot. In the Champions League quarterfinals, we are going home. We lose 2-1. We score in the 38th minute with Neres, but then Timo Werner gets a brace. How weak was our defense? We score in the 38th, concede in the 39th, and we're eliminated in the round of 16 here for season one. Thankfully, lads, we have gone on an absolutely belter second half of the season. I don't think we lost a single game in the second half of the season, if I'm being honest. And we have finished on 91 points 
and have finished 25 points ahead of PSV. That is absolutely ridiculous. That shows the might of Ajax, but that's something we need to be doing every season. We need to be winning the Eredivisie every single season here at Ajax. Not that there's relegation in FIFA, but Venlo, Den Haag, Sparta Rotterdam all down the bottom of the table. But unfortunately, we lost the Orange Becker final to Fortuna Sittard 2-1. Are you kidding me? PSG did go on to end up winning the Champions League 2-0 over Barcelona. And it's Manchester City eliminating Inter Milan to win the Europa League 1-0. Also, just quietly, how good a season has Maximiliano Gomez had? 29 goals, 5 assists, and then as well, David Neres, 25 goals and 19 assists. That is absolutely ridiculous from a lot of our players. Bloody Anthony and Promise having crazy good seasons as well. But there we go, lads. That is season number one done and dusted here at Ajax. Qualified for the Champions League again. Made the knockout rounds. Got a bit of experience there. Brought in a few good players. It's a decent start to life here in Amsterdam, but we're going to have to take it up another gear in season two. All right, so season number two begins here with Shock Horror. A player going out on loan. It is Jurgen Eklenkamp on a one-year loan move to Lazio. And we have decided to sell the Brazilian striker Danilio to Sarsfield in Argentina, I believe it is, for 2.4 mil. Lissandro Magalhães also out of the club, off to Frankfurt here. I feel like I've sold a fair few players to Frankfurt in this rebuild, but he's headed there for 5.3 mil. And a move that I was weighing up in all honesty, I wasn't sure whether I wanted to make this deal happen or not, but Quincy Promes is leaving the club. 44.6 million pounds for the Dutch midfielder to send him to Juventus. Razvan Marin also out of the club. We're on an absolute clearance sale here, lads. The Romanian midfielder headed to Wolves. And it is a big boy signing here. It is Giovanni Lo Celso joining us for 60 million pounds on the dot to bring the Argentinian midfielder across from Tottenham. 84 rated. He is going to be a monster addition to the midfield, linking up with Golovin, hopefully causing absolute havoc and getting assists and goals for days. But we are back to the departure scene. Sean Kleber is headed to Everton for 14 mil. And of course, one of the downsides about playing in the Dutch league is that we have to go through the qualifying rounds. So we are versing Gornick in the qualifiers in this second season. So we're gonna quick sim this first leg here against Gornick, see how we go. I believe they're Polish, gonna not waste any time. Gonna jump into it, and it is going to be a 2-0 win. Golovin with a brace, let's go. In a strong position to get to the second round of qualifying. Of course, you've got to go through two bloody rounds to qualify for the Champions League group stages, but we're 2-0 up here. We're gonna simulate the second leg, and we are going to be through to the second round. 3-0 in this game, 5-0 on aggregate. And we have been drawn up against our group mates from last season for the second round of qualifying. It is FC Midtjylland here. A bit more of a challenge compared to Gornick or whoever it was we just faced. But we're gonna quick sim the first leg here on the road. We need to get some away goals. And away goals are what we get. 3-0, beautiful. In a very good position here to get ourselves back to the Champions League group stages. 3-0 up after the first leg. We're gonna quick sim the second leg and we're gonna officially qualify for the Champions League group stages once again. 6-0 on aggregate. But we're only going to make the one signing here in the opening window of season two. Similarly to last season, there's a lot of moving pieces with the squad and I really wanna see what we can do moving forward. I wanna see how we find ourselves halfway through the season, how the growth of certain players is going. There's just a lot of variables that I have to take into account with this Ajax rebuild. But we signed La Celso, sold a lot of players, gonna have a bit to work with. Hopefully it's gonna be a good season too. And I mean, this is what the starting 11 looks like. La Celso currently in the process of being converted to an attacking midfielder. The side is almost where I wanted it to be in terms of balance. I mean, Onana is just absolutely flying right now, which I'm not complaining with at all. Uh, Tagliafico, a little bit older. Scherz, a little bit behind, but again, younger. There's just so many variables, but right now, I'm happy with the starting 11. I would say, and I don't know how this has happened, but we have got a tougher group than we did last year. Liverpool again, 
Leipzig, they're bloody brilliant on career mode. And then Istanbul or President's Eleven, Basik Shiha. We need to make sure that we get ourselves back to the round of 16. We've got a better squad than last season. I feel like we can go much deeper, semi-finals, the final, if we work hard enough. But we need to get ourselves out of what I would say is the group of death. So we're going to simulate it and find out in three, two, one. There it is, lads. We have got ourselves out of the group stages. But Liverpool, who I thought would be a shoe in to top the group, Liverpool have finished in third. So Liverpool are headed to the Europa League. Surely they're going to wipe the floor and win the Europa League there. But ourselves and RB Leipzig are through to the Champions League knockout rounds. And we are headed back to London once again in the Champions League round of 16. Not West End London this year. This year we're headed to North London as we face Arsenal. But lads, we're going to have to have a massive second half of the season just like we did last year because this has been a shocking, shocking start to the season. Sitting fourth in the Eredivisie on 35 points. Nine points behind first place Feyenoord. This is not good at all. So we're going to look to really make some moves here in January. We've got an absolutely belter price for Nicolas Tagliafico, the Argentinian left back, departing the club at the peak of his career, headed to Real Madrid for 95.5 million pounds. Bloody hell. We got, we got that cashola now. We got that... Madrid money. And we have decided to sign the replacement here. He's the exact same rating as Tagliafico, but three years younger. And we've signed him for like 25 million pounds less than we sold bloody Tagliafico. It is Jose Gaia joining us for 69.5 million pounds from Valencia. We've also decided to loan out Kenneth Taylor once again, a two year loan move to Alaves. And we've gone ahead and signed ourselves a defender for the here and now. Pershers. He's going to be a great player in the future, but I want somebody that's ready to compete for a Champions League title this season. The aim of the game, the aim of the rebuild is to win the rebuild as fast as we possibly can. And when we find ourselves in the position that we are right now, I would be stupid not to go all out and try building a Champions League winning squad. So Presnel Kempembe, welcome, signing from Barcelona for 81.2 million pounds. So there we go, lads. A transfer window focused solely on the improvement of the defense. Jose Gaia, Presnil Kempembe into the club, Tagliafico out of it. I am so interested to see what the Champions League knockout rounds have in store for us. So this is the exact same position we found ourselves in last year. We took on Chelsea at home for the first leg. I said it then, I'll say it again. A clean sheet is priority number one. Last year, they managed to get a goal past us and obviously that cost us in the long run as well with losing the second leg. But regardless, we're going to put last season out of our mind and focus on season number two here. The first leg at home against Arsenal is a one-all draw just like last year. Are you kidding me? Pierre-Marie Aubameyang is going to give Arsenal an away goal advantage. I mean, I said it last year. We're still alive in this. But them getting an away goal just hurts a little bit. But we are a significantly better side this year than we were last year. So for the second leg, we need to step up. Like I said last year, like we did last year, we wiped out the away goal advantage. We need to do that again. We need to absolutely dominate Arsenal here as we simulate the second leg. And the scoreline is a three. What the hell? We've lost 3-1 to Arsenal. So that's what? 4-2 on aggregate. We are cursed. The round of 16 is our bogey. Bloody disappointed to go out for the rec second consecutive year in the round of 16. And to make matters worse, we haven't won the Eredivisie title here with, P with Ajax. PSV winning by six points, but at least we're still in the Champions League again next season. Just bloody disappointing because... I don't know, I just would have loved to go deeper in everything this year. Fortuna Sittard, Den Haag, Zwoll, all these sides down the bottom of the table, however. Feyenoord have gone ahead and won the Orange Becker over PSV. Man City did go on to take down Atletico Madrid and win the Champions League. And Everton have won an all-English Europa League final. So there we go, lads. I was happy with what we'd done in Season 2 up until the results came in. The squad's coming along absolutely brilliantly. But the results just aren't really matching it, especially for our standards. So we're going to have to give ourselves a kick up the behind for season three and make sure we get this shit done. 
Season 3, here we go. The first player out of Ajax is going to be Per Scherz. Again, a man that I was considering letting grow for the rebuild, but we could not say 60.9 million pounds for an 80 rated player, especially in a season when I think we should be making a push to go at least to the semi-finals of the Champions League. So... We've sent Scherz to Leon here for 60.9 million. And I have decided to part company with Alexander Golovin. Just not growing as quickly as I would have hoped. He still grew four overall in the two years he was here, but still... Compared to some of the other members of the squad, it's just not as iconic. So I sold Golovin to Inter Milan for 73.7 mil. And his replacement has been sorted. It is Ruben Neves, 87 rated, joining us here for 110 million pounds from Chelsea. We've also decided to sign a backup goalkeeper to the squad. It is Emil Ordero, the Italian goalkeeper signing here for 21.6 million pounds from Sampdoria. And we have decided to sell Hassan Bande or Bande to FC Twente on a permanent deal. The striker is headed there for 1.75 million pounds. Matthias Ginter also joining the squad here. Another backup addition to the side. 83 rated, 30.5 million pounds because I was considering keeping Perchers as a backup center back option. But the merit of the fact is, we have got Ginta, who's three overall higher than Scherz is currently. And we got him for half the price we sold Scherz for. So it makes sense short term. I could not help myself. When I saw Luis Suarez available on a free transfer, I thought we had to bring him back to Ajax. It's a no-brainer for me. Luis Suarez has signed here on a permanent deal, a free deal. He's 35 years of age. 83 rated, I expect him to decrease down to at least probably 80 or 79, but still, it's just too good not to bring Luis Suarez back as a backup striker. So we are in qualifiers here for the Champions League once again. Again, another former team or another former group mate of ours. It is Istanbul, Bazik Shahar. I'm never going to learn how to pronounce that name, but we're taking on the President's eleven. The first leg is at home. And the first leg is going to be a 2-0 win. In a very strong position here as we head to Turkey for the second leg. Come on, lads. 2-0 advantage. And the scoreline is a 1-0 win. We're headed to the second round of qualifying. But qualifying has just become that much harder as we have been drawn up against AS Monaco here in the second round of qualifiers. Again, a big opponent. We're traveling away. It's a beautiful Monaco here. Going to go sit next to the water and watch the uh, F1 Grand Prix. But anyways, we're taking on AS Monaco. The first leg away is a 3-1 win. Kempembe and Neres getting on the scorer sheets. That's a strong start. Come on, lads. The second leg for a spot back in the Champions League group stages. As we take on AS Monaco here, we've got the advantage. Can we secure the qualification? Yes, we do. Back in the group stages. Let's go, baby. 2-1 in the second leg. Neves killing it, man. So there we go, lads. A very, very busy start to season number three. Neves, Eldoro, Ginta, Suarez all into the club. Scherz, Golovin, Bande all out of the team. Absolutely stoked with the business we have done. I mean, we're doing so well that Bayern Munich want us to take over as their manager. Thanks but no thanks. So this is how our starting 11 is looking heading into season three's Champions League campaign. And I mean, it's a very balanced side. I'd still like certain areas of the squad to grow. I mean, like I've said in previous rebuilds, I love it when the majority of the squad's 85 or higher, which we have right now, but I just want more growth. I want players hitting the nineties. I want all of that to happen. The bench is looking decent. The bench isn't too bad. We've got stronger areas in certain positions, but overall, I'm pretty impressed with this Ajax side we've managed to put together. Every year we have had ridiculously just overpowered and tough groups in the Champions League, but this year we finally get somewhat of a reprieve as we have Villarreal, Benfica, and Lokomotiv Moscow. Don't get me wrong, this isn't a walk in the park, but this is a group that I feel confident we can top. It's a group we should be topping if we consider ourselves legitimate Champions League contenders. This team bloody loves a draw, don't they? We finish second in Group D of the Champions League here. Benfica top the group. We go undefeated and get four bloody draws. That is ridiculous. That is absolutely ridiculous. But it's okay. Mini rant over because we 
are into the round of 16 again. It's our third successive year traveling to England for the Champions League round of 16. This time though, heading a little bit further north, traveling to Manchester. That is gonna be quite a short flight. I remember the first time I ever went to Manchester, I had to fly through Amsterdam as a stopover. So I know it's a very quick flight per from personal experience, but we're taking on United. Fingers bloody crossed we can break the last 16 curse. But good to see we are back to our dominating ways here in the Eredivisie. We're currently undefeated, 10 points clear of FC Utrecht and PSV. 48 points, zero losses, just the five goals conceded all season. I love that. And after our spending spree and our very busy opening transfer window here to season three, we have decided to do no business in the January transfer window. Very interested to see whether this squad can get the job done. I kind of wanted to make another addition to the bench, but not this season. Didn't have the finances to do it and couldn't justify selling any of the players. But regardless, lads, we're in the round of 16. We're taking on Manchester United and we're looking to finally bloody break the curse. Let's go. All right, we have the first leg here at home once again. Everything just feels like deja vu. I swear to God, if this feels like, if this ends up as another one all draw, I'm just gonna go and get somebody into the house to bloody put a curse onto my PC or like whatever, whatever they do to get spirits out of a cursed room. I'm gonna do that for, my, for this bloody office. But anyways, let's quick sim it here at home. The Johan Cruyff Arena, the scoreline against United, is a 1-0 loss. Are you kidding me? We can't keep a clean sheet. And now we've got to have an even more difficult second leg away at Old Trafford. We are 1-0 down. Ridiculous. We are going to have to have a massive second leg here if we want to get ourselves into the quarterfinals. We are 1-0 down. They have an away goal as well, so we're going to have to score nice and early here if we are any shot. A draw does nothing for us. We have to get an outright win. As we take on United here, they're gonna quick sim it at Old Trafford, and the scoreline is a 2-0 win! Love the voice crack. I'm genuinely losing my voice from doing these rebuilds every day, but I don't care. I'll put some more strain on it because we take down United, 2-0. Neres and our right back, Masrui, getting on the score of sheet. We break the curse. We're in the quarters, let's go. And in the quarterfinals, it is time for the Perchers Derby as we are taking on Leon. Finally, we get to start a knockout round in the bloody, in the away leg. I love having the away leg first. We need to get some away goals on the board. We need to use it to our advantage here as we travel to Leon in France, looking to get ourselves the advantage. We're gonna quick sim the first leg here against Leon and the score line is a 2-0 win. Let's go. Two away goals on the board. Absolutely love that. Come on, lads. We are in absolute pole position, an absolute brilliant position to get ourselves to the semifinals for the first time in this rebuild and for the first time since they lost to Spurs a few years ago. But we're 2-0 up. We're going to quick sim it here against Olympic Leon and the scoreline is a two-all draw. We are headed to the Champions League semi-finals. But this is where things get unbelievably difficult because in the semi-finals, we have been drawn up against Juventus. We're gonna be taking on Quincy Promes, taking on Juve. It's gonna be a massive, massive challenge for us. Bloody hell, lads, the first leg is at home. That's already a bad omen here. Taking on Juventus. I'm hopeful that Cristiano Ronaldo has retired or at least gone down significantly in overall by this point. But we're going to jump into it. The first leg here at home. Come on, lads. The clean sheet is what we need. We're going to quick sim the first leg. Fingers and toes crossed. And it's a 2-1 it's loss. Are you taking the piss? Ronaldo scores for them as well. Are you taking the absolute piss? Oh, my. Two away goals on the board. We're gonna have to be so bloody good here in the second leg. Ah. Normally when I jump into the second leg of a Champions League semi-final, we have the lead or it's at least a draw. But in this game, we're gonna have to have an absolutely phenomenal performance as we travel away to Turin here to take on Juventus. We are 2-1 down. A 1-0 win will not get us through. We need to score at least two goals here in this second leg as we are going to quick sim the second game against Juve. And the scoreline 
is a 2-0 win. Oh my god. Okay. We actually we dominate. Let me look at that. Seven shots compared to zero, wherever that is where I'm pointing. But zero shots from Juve, seven from us. 2-0. Neres with a brace. I swear David Neres have been scoring all rebuild long. We're headed to the Champions League final to face either Liverpool or Real Madrid. My bloody word. So here we go, lads. It is a massive Champions League final as Ajax face Liverpool. Luis Suarez against his former club in Liverpool. We have a massive, massive Champions League final here. It's going to be a huge task. I'm so interested to see how we pull up against Liverpool. Taking a look around the grounds, though, at the other results. Napoli take down Atletico Madrid to win the Europa League. We have won another Eredivisie title here, and we've done it in absolute fashion this season, lads. Undefeated with Ajax. Things you love to see. And at the other end of the table, Den Haag, Venlo, Valvik all down the bottom. We have finally got our hands on the Orange Becker title for this rebuild as well, taking down PSV 2-1. But here we go, lads. It's the time to look at the squad report here with Ajax. We have put together an absolutely brilliant side so far. I always love in rebuilds when I have a very strong bench and I feel confident in the bench, and that is exactly how I feel today. But all of that confidence can go away quite quickly if we get punched in the face by Liverpool nice and early here. We're going to have to make sure that we start the game strong. We just play a professional brand of FIFA, figure out how to play with this squad, and just get the job done against Liverpool. Come on, lads. Huge Champions League final ahead of us. It is Liverpool versus our Ajax. Let's get this rebuild complete. Come on, lads. Big bloody game ahead of us. Let's get it done with Ajax and become European champions for the first time in almost 25 years. Martinez. I'm watching the runs down the wing there. It's Lo Celso. Out there to Anthony. Go back again. Good, good. I see that run. I see that run. Good hold up play. Through there. Neres. One on one. Oh! Neres. He scores goals for fun in the Champions League knockout stages. And in the final, there is no difference. Neres keeping Allison rooted to the spot. That was an absolute thunderbolt of a shot out of his boot. Corner here for Liverpool. Salah in there, punched away nicely. Henderson. Oh my god! You can keep trying that all day, Hendo. Jesus Christ, that one's going to land in my backyard in Australia. Liverpool have been really fucking on top of us since they since we scored that goal. We just can't get a clean bloody tackle. The bounce of the ball is horrible. They go through. What a tackle! Finally! I talk about not being able to make a tackle. We make a brilliant one there. And now, maybe. Oh my god, it's just been cleaned up. But we got the ball back! Come on. Come on. Through. Anthony. Over. Oh, corner. It's going to be a corner here for us. Need a second goal, lads. I don't feel confident. Gomez! Oh, my God. Need to do better. Good tackle, mate. Come on. Lo Celso going there to Gomez. Gomez. Nice run. Martinez. Martinez. The dink. The finish. The doubling of the lead. Let's go, lads. Ajax. 2-0 up here against Liverpool. That dink from Martinez was absolutely saucy. There it is, lads. We are champions of Europe with Ajax, lads. 
What a moment. If you enjoyed today's rebuild with the Ajax superpower, the Amsterdam superpower, make sure you leave a like on the video. Subscribe if you're new around here. I'll see you for the next one soon. Enjoy the title celebrations. It has been Jared HD here. I'm out. Peace.